Cafe Networking Podcast promotes successful business experts. I'm Tom Riach, known as the king of networking, connecting people throughout the world from my podcast studio in Brazil. <clears throat> Today we talked with Jesse Fry, a customer experience strategist, joining us from Asheville, North Carolina. Jesse Fry, a certified business coach, facilitator, speaker, and CX strategist. Jesse, what's the most common gap in client experience? Uh, Tom, that's a great question. Um, it really comes down to this. Uh, the most common gap between what customers actually want and what the businesses are actually giving them. That is the most common gap. So we really don't know as a business person what they want. Exactly. So a lot of times um, people are delivering a service or a product to people and it, I, I've seen it in, mostly in professional services because we work a lot with, you know, accounting firms, law firms, and they're delivering what you think the business owner thinks the client wants, not actually delivering a product or service based on market research, based on uh, the voice of the customer. So that's oftentimes what we see is that most of the times we don't know what people want. We think we do. We make assumptions and then we deliver products uh, to people. And then it turns out that uh, the customer actually didn't want what you were trying to sell them. Well, how did then you help business persons overcome the gap? Yeah, so it really comes down to um, one, understanding what the current experience looks like and understanding the product and then really mapping out what the actual desired state is. So we always look at it from a current state. What is, how are you actually delivering your product or service? And again, we're, we're more service based mm -hmm. um, you know, with our company, but you can do the same thing with products as well, right? Um, and really understanding what your current state is and then talking to actual clients and customers and understanding what they want, understanding where the gaps are. So we, we say there's two things within the customer experience. There are gaps. These are the opportunities to basically make improvements where you're not communicating with somebody when you could be or friction points. Those are the places where you're creating a friction or a challenge or an issue with your client. And it may mean that you're not following up with the client or maybe there's a process where the, the customer's just not satisfied. Mm -hmm. So it's understanding what those gaps are and understanding what those friction points are. Well, business worldwide is moving towards service because you mentioned product, you mentioned service. As, as yeah. a consumer, I, I tend to think of a product that comes in a box. I can see it. I open it up. I can touch and feel it. It looks good or tastes good or works or it doesn't. Yeah. Service is tougher, right? Uh, yeah. It's not tangible. We're out there and, you know, business persons are saying what they think they offer. Uh, but I'm not really sure what I need, even from the service standpoint. So I don't know what I want in that box. That, that's true. You know, it, it's like when, um, you know, when Apple first came out with the first iPod, nobody knew that they actually wanted an iPod, right? Mm -hmm. So there is this balance between what the actual consumer or the business, if you're B2B, it's business. If you're consumer, it's, it's obviously B2C. So you need to really understand what is the problem you're solving. So uh, for example, in the, in the iPod space, you know, everybody had Walkmans and they had to carry around tapes and there was no simple electronic format to be able to carry all these songs and put all these songs into a single device. So Apple created the iPod mm -hmm. to do that. We also had phones before the first iPhone came out, but the reality was, is, is there was a problem and there was an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Those are, again, what are the friction points? That's the problem that the consumer or the business has. And then there's opportunities. It's understanding where can we add better value to the consumer or to the business. And it's important to understand both of those. Otherwise, if you just keep on solving your client's problems, I always say you can't keep solving your client's problems over and over again, uh, when eventually you're going to have to innovate. And that's where uh, adding innovation, adding, you know, creative ideas mm -hmm. and doing something different creates your differentiation in the marketplace. Well, you, you know, the, the word you mentioned, friction and friction points, I think that's it because many times we have a, I'll call it a raspy engagement, right? And it may not be, you know, a, a barrier, but sometimes it just doesn't feel right. It feels like we're getting sanded down. Uh, but at the same point, you mentioned uh, iPhones. And everything. As a service company, we're using products, right? We're using yeah. the media. We're using a lot of things today to deliver our service. Uh, 
Correct. So we also have to know how our service is getting out there, how it's being received. What we're doing right now, a podcast, uh, we're generating content. Uh, how will people be hearing and actually listening? And you know, what will bring that? If they have a problem, they may not. They just want to learn. Uh, but how is that being delivered? And that's being delivered through a product. That, that's correct. I mean, I think even if you, you used an example earlier about, you know, just buying a, you know, let's say we'll give you the example of bakery, right? You can have two bakeries in the same town. They can be literally a block apart, sometimes even side by side in the, on the same block, regardless of what city you were talking about. And they offer a product, right? And that could be a croissant, that could be a, a you know, a baguette. It doesn't really matter what that product is. If one bakery delivers impeccable service and they package that croissant or, or they cre- you know have a, a beautiful box and that box says, we appreciate you on the top of the box, right? <laughs> and they put a, a napkin and a fork and a little plastic knife in there because they know that maybe you're driving to work and, and you don't want to get your hands messy because it's mm-hmm. a chocolate croissant. <laughs> right. If, that bakery versus the bakery that just puts it into a bag and hands it to you and you walk away is a very different customer experience. So it's understanding how the consumer will consume, Mm -hmm. right? In this particular case, it's like literally eating it and putting it in our mouths. But you know, there, there's a, there's things to look at. It's like, um, you know, the company, there, there's companies when you buy a product, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with here in the States of In-N-Out Burger, um, but in and out Burger is a very popular burger joint on the West Coast of the United States. Mm. And they actually will ask you, are you going to be eating in the car or, or not, right? So whenever the first time I ever went, I was like, well, why are they asking me if I'm going to be eating in the car? Because right. they actually give you a placemat ah. to put the meal down so you don't <laughs> actually like, drop the mustard on your seat or on your clothing. So again, great customer experience. And that, well, and, and that's how our, you know our customer, our client, will actually be using whatever it is we give. And they may not. It's obviously a fresh croissant. Nobody likes a stale one. But much right. of our service, talking about accountants, we're talking about lawyers, we're talking about other professionals. It right. may not be consumed right now. It may not be hot off the the burner. Uh, we may be consuming it, or it may be redistributed within an organization. So how does that filter down? Yeah, I mean, I let, you will take you, know, you. You talked about lawyers, so um, I, we work with a lot of lawyers, and um, you know, law firms. It might take, and, and I'll use immigration for an example. So we have a lot of people that are immigrating from various places all over the world to the United States, and these immigration attorneys will work with them, and, and there is a specific process that is dictated by the U.S. government that the attorneys have to follow. And now consumers can, you know, the, the, the clients for the law firm, they can do that themselves, right? Mm-hmm. They can actually go through the immigration process themselves, but the attorneys, they know exactly what to do and they have a very defined process to do. Well, that could take a year. That entire process could take a year. So you're right. They may not consume the service immediately. Mm-hmm. It may take time for them to consume it, but there's a moment where, We always say that the client experience starts when people become aware of your brand. Mm. So people become aware of your podcast when they see it on uh, Spotify or when they see it on iTunes. And they may not actually consume your podcast for another year, but they become aware of your brand in the moment that they first become aware of it in marketing. And that's no different than a lawyer. So the immigration experience starts when you first communicate with them. Or if you're an accountant, the first time that they Google search, I need an accountant to do my taxes for the year, they're going to find that online. They're going to interact with your brand, but it doesn't mean they're going to consume your services. So it's really understanding what the entire journey looks like. Mm -hmm. And it's mapping that journey out from the initial awareness all the way to the time that you're no longer serving them. And because they're, you're no longer serving them, and in the case of the lawyer, they, you, they got their green card, but that doesn't mean that they're not going to refer their friends and family. Right. That doesn't mean that maybe down the road they want to, once they get their green card, you know, usually three to four years later, they then want to file for residency. So then they come back to you again, and if you just ignore them from that point on, oh, well, we got them the green card, we're done with them, they may actually choose a different attorney 
later on in the future. So it's creating continuous communication with your clients, but knowing what is too much, what is too little. It's understanding what your consumer or your or your buyer mm-hmm. wants at each stage. So for you, a podcast, you know, it's making it accessible and making it as accessible in different languages or making it accessible on different platforms. Not everybody has an iPhone is going to use iTunes. So right. putting it in Spotify or in the Google Android store, I think they call it Android store. I don't, I don't have an Android, but uh, the Google store, um, you, putting them in places that's consumable, but understanding that client journey, uh, regardless of if they consume your product today and put it in their mouth or put the shirt on their back, uh, or they use your their, your service maybe a year from now. Well, I think that's the point, that, that a consumer uh, experience is never over. Correct. Even as a supplier, as, as a vendor of whatever it is, it's never over. Hopefully it's never over because what you're saying, right. the repeat business, the follow-up, the review, the recommendation, whatever is out there. So if we've just delivered the croissant and think that we've done what we should be doing, it's never over. It should never be over. Right. And so right. That, that, so. staying in touch you know, forever, uh, I think, is part of reducing and, and bringing friction uh, to a minimal and reaching more success. Right, Jesse? Yeah, absolutely. And, and use, using the croissant as an example, uh, you know, as a business person, you might walk in and buy one croissant. But if they just ignore you from that point on and say, thank you very much, they bag it. And when you walk away and they don't find a way to engage with you. Maybe you want to buy 300 croissants right. for an event that you're hosting six months from now. And if you treat them amazing and the quality of the product is amazing and the service is amazing, they're always going to remember in their mind, even if you don't have access to email them, right. they're going to remember that experience and they're going to say, I'm going to refer that, you know, this place because they have such amazing products or I'm going to refer them out or I'm going to use them again. So you're 100%, Tom. It, it is um, very important to continue to understand that a one-time connection with your clients is not the only connection you're going to have with them. But to that point, how can our listeners make that first-time connection with you? Yeah, so it's real simple. Uh, you can visit coach.jesse, J-E-S-S-E, middle initial J, last name Fry, F-R-Y-E dot com. Uh, we have information about me. There's information about our businesses, who we work with. Uh, we have a couple different brands that we use depending on the industry uh, to help people. So that's the easiest way. It's just coach.jessejfry.com. Very good. So thanks a lot for sharing your time and experience. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate it. It was uh, really good to talk to you today. Okay. And for our listeners, there's more information, and it's Jesse J. Fry, J E S S E. The initial J, the last name F R Y E. You find him on LinkedIn and you'll find him at coach.jessejfry.com. That's J E S S E J F R Y E.com. Cafe Network is brought to us by Focus and My Market Intelligence, an agricultural market research specialist in Brazil. More information at their site, F O C U S M I.com. Thanks for listening until the next time here at Cafe and Networking Podcast.